All right, let's go on to sizing, the trend of sizing. So you've run your channel now for five years. I'm three years in. Um, always been a bit of a specialized fanboy. So let's talk about specialized sizing. So my first enduro mountain bike was an enduro 2015 29er, and that had a reach of 440 millimeters. And now my cut, and that was a large. And now my current equivalent large Kinevo SL is well, it's an S4, which is pretty much a large is 485 millimeters, I believe. Now, I don't think I've got any taller in the last five years, but do you think we're riding too big a bikes now? Do you think that's a trend? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I do think it's a trend. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and that doesn't mean that's a bad trend. Personally, I think we are on the end of this, the, uh, the swing here of the pendulum and it's going to come back. Um, I think it's crazy to me that, you know, I'm five eleven. Uh, so you'll have to convert that for five eleven would be like my size pretty much. So you'd be like 182 centimeters, 183 centimeters, somewhere around that. Okay. Yeah. The fact that I think that I, am now looking at riding lots of size medium bikes is kind of crazy. Um, so what would be your preferred reach? So for e-bikes, yep. my preferred reach um, is 475 to 480. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, 485 is pushing it, but I'm, I can make that work. Yep. Uh, on, a, on a non e-bike, 485 is is a sweet spot for me um yep. maybe going to 490 but i think with an e-bike i want a little shorter reach because the bike's weight inherently makes them more stable yeah. um so i can get away with having a shorter bike and keeping that stability but the shorter front end also makes it easier to manual and corner the bike and have more power over it than if it's too long you know the the, the center of gravity changes the wheel everything gets longer and if you've got a really heavy bike i would rather have it be shorter so i can keep that playfulness because i like a really playful bike yeah no i've uh i'm just hunting now for a couple of months and my mate's my size and he just and he's a very good rider julian shout out mate uh he's getting old now old man um <laughs> and he just sized down uh and he just sized down to a medium track rail and uh, he's always a large, and he just sized down, and he was like, "Man, twenty niners front and back, you do not want a super long bike, and uh, not if you want, not if you're a good rider." And this is the thing: like a good rider or a capable rider will start to understand where they're at. And I people always, and you'd get it as well. Well, what size should I get? And this is a big deal for a lot of people because you know. We are lucky that we get to ride these bikes. And, you know, uh, a lot of the time we don't pay for them. They get sent to us. We send them back, all that stuff. There's not, oh, it's not a lot of thought that goes into sizing for me. I say, oh, give me a large or I'll look at the geometry. Oh, I'll try a medium on that one. But we're not, you know, slash, splashing down 12 grands and then making a mistake. Right. So, you know, and, and, and people like, so if you don't know what size you are, and you're not that confident, just go off the size calculator. Like the guys, the, the, the engineers know what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, with, with what you just said, I have two things to say. One, <clears throat> the engineers know what they're talking about for sure. However, they have their own, style of riding and they also ride and develop the bikes for largely their local terrain right true yeah true so the guys at norco um and transition for example are going to design their bikes to work in the pacific northwest on groomed like or just the, i mean the the trails that you see in the videos right yeah the guys at uh pivot are going to design the trails to work in Phoenix, Arizona, right? And like 
and I, and I understand these guys have teams and pro athletes all over. And, and I know for a fact, these companies do travel to different places with teams to spend time and ride the bikes in different terrain to see how they handle it. But you got to assume most of the riding time they spend developing their product is on their local terrain. And I think that's something people need to consider when they're looking to buy a bike. Um, doesn't it's not the end all be all decision maker but if you're riding a place that's super steep or has big high speed berms and jumps you're going to probably be able to get away with a longer reach and a lower bottom bracket right yep. whereas if you're riding somewhere that's totally hand cut raw 25 year old mountain bike trails and you're having to pedal over rocks and stumps and all the natural shit you're not going to want a 12 inch high bottom bracket you know what I mean? And a 62 yeah, yeah. degree head tube angle because your bike's going to suck. Yeah, <laughs> no, totally. Um, now that comes into, uh, it's not even a question, but I just sort of a segue into a question. What do you reckon is this, um, the all the adjustable geometry, is this just another sales pitch? Is this a trend or do you actually use it? <laughs> well, those are two different questions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I do not think they're a sales pitch. Um, I think they're absolutely useful and I really like when companies do them well, do I use it? Not all the time or not very much at all, but it depends on the brand's execution, right? Uh, specialized is a prime example. I know you brought them up already cause you're a fanboy, and I'm, uh, I like their bikes a lot as well. <clears throat> the new Levo has got, you know, it comes in the nominal position. Then you've got the headset cut plus or minus. Then you've got, you know, the rear end that you can do high, low. I think that is awesome because the Levo is such a good bike. Um, however, what someone in Bellingham or Squamish might want to set their bike up in could be totally different than how someone wants to ride it in like New Jersey, right? So the fact that someone can have that same bike, the same suspension platform, the same motor, however, they can have a full, you know, range of geometry adjustability to give them bottom bracket clearance or a head tube angle that better suits them is awesome. Yeah, totally. I think they, I think they nailed it. So I run the bike in the middle position and the high out back, or maybe I'll go to the low depending on where I'm at. But like, I'm I've experimented, but like I think they just nailed it. Like the bike's right in my happy spot in the middle. But I love the fact that I could go up or down depending on where I lived or rode. I, I think uh, I think it's a I think for a lot of the riders out there, it is like a salesy, pitchy thing that will will make someone purchase a bike over another brand to say that hey i can change it i think a lot of people probably aren't changing it but at the same time when i got mine i rode i ride mine in the high and the middle position like you in most of my local trails but then i went to andorra uh and i went uh low and 63 and a half and then when i was racing uh at the ews i was changing all over the place because i was trying to get the most out of the bike and I had that. I was like, okay, so at Kranz, um, which was kind of steeper, uh, I was running it at 60, 63 and a half. But then in Finale, I was running it at 64 and a half. So I think I think I I definitely love it and use it. I don't know how much everyone's using it, but you're right. Like they have the they have they can shoot like they can set it and forget it to the trails that they are riding mostly. And legend riders, I hope you enjoyed that little clip from the podcast I did the other day with the legend Drew Rohde from The Lone Wolf. We talked for about an hour and a half, all trends for 2023 in the electric mountain bike industry. We also let a few secrets slide. So if you wanna see the full hour and a half, click on the link up here and check it out. And riders, if you haven't subscribed to Sam's Bikes, please do so, share it with like-minded people, and I'm gonna see you next time.